Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to this webinar um, about hybrid big room planning. And uh, there's a little something about the wording here. So big room planning uh, is also known as PI planning, if you are sort of a safe person. Uh, some call it 90 day planning, and I'm sure there are other, other ways of, of um, of naming this, but um, uh, so so we are looking forward to, uh, to spending this morning together with you and have a little chat about uh, the ins and outs, the tips and tricks, the do's and don'ts of hybrid or online big room planning. And for the rest of the webinar, we'll just call it big room planning rather than using all the other words I just uh, I just mentioned. Uh, and I am here with uh, Elliot Ferber, and Elliot is the head of planning and portfolio at Stena Line, uh, and Stena Line is one of the world's uh, largest ferry operators. So, good morning, Elliot. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Ola, and good morning, everybody. Um, so we don't see you all, but if you have, uh, if you would like to write any questions or have any comments then please put it in the chat and we will we will try and keep up with what you have to say as well yeah and Elliot uh, I believe that everyone or most people here uh, are familiar with uh, the term big room planning or, or this kind of yeah, planning uh, but just super briefly uh, if we strike the hybrid or online big room planning to you just briefly what what is that yeah, so bigger and planning for us, at least at Stena, is is sort of the bringing together of all of our teams um, across digital um, to, yeah, sort of plan together, understand together um, what it is that we're sort of going to be doing and prioritizing over the next sort of 90 days. Um, and sort of looking a bit further out, we have a bit of preparation that goes into that, that we call long and thin planning. That's uh, sort of a 12 month rolling plan um, where we sort of create our, our epics and, and the, the larger sort of chunks of work that we want to focus on. So that we take into our, our big room planning and, and slice down and, and add sort of smaller, faster sort of deliverables in, into, those, uh, into those chunks of work. So. Yeah, I think most people here are probably pretty familiar with the sort of uh, the process and, and the setup. Um, yeah, so it, it's basically kind of, a, yeah, our, our standard um, sort of way to to plan now with Instant Align. So that's the big room. And, and now for the hybrid part, have you, so when COVID hit and uh, sort of when, you know, internationalization hit, if you will, did you consider just not doing the big room planning, or or did you go straight for the for the online hybrid version? Yeah, so I wasn't at Stena um, when COVID hit, and so uh, in, in terms of the history, I think it was a. It it was a pretty clear cut decision uh, even before. COVID. I, um, I mean, even for me, you know, in, in my previous uh, job that, you know, we, we should offer that flexibility to, to people, right? It's, uh, you know, it, it's very, the easy route is always, okay, either fully in person or, or fully online. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think COVID showed us and, and even beforehand that, you know, life happens, you know, people need to, whether it's take care of their, their sick kids or, you know, um, just cannot attend um, physically. I think it's it's a shame to take away that sort of physical, uh, the opportunity to be there with the team physically, but also, you know, you, people need to be away and and want to to join in. So it, we, we shouldn't sort of have a hard kind of stamp one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, so hybrid for me and, and definitely now within Stena uh, is, is uh, a really important part of the, of the way we plan. Okay. So, so that it sounds to me right now that there's, we use the word hybrid and mm -hmm. we use the word online. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk a little about how, how do you see those words? I, you, you and I never talk about that. So. 
Yeah, so... Migrate and what's online? Yeah, so <laughs> that's a very good question. But I think what I'm... When I when I say online, it, it's it's purely you know the sort of participation within within teams and having this conversation as all of us are today, just over, whether it's over Zoom, whether it's in Teams, just purely in the sort of digital space or digital sphere, maybe you want to call it. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, and and hybrid for me is just really offering that sort of that physical space along alongside that. So having, as I said, you know, having that opportunity to be together physically face to face, um, whilst also, you know, interacting with with um, people who are at home um, over Teams, Zoom, whatever your sort of preferred tool is. Um, yeah, so it, it's really just that kind of coming together of, of physically and and over uh, over the Internet. Mm, OK. Um, yeah, I've been doing, uh, I just, this is very fresh. I, I did a, I fi yesterday I finished a, uh, a big room planning, um, at a large company in, in Gothenburg and, and we had that too, you know, some were together in a big room with their team, some with some more teams together in the big room and they went in and out of the little meeting rooms and we had the, the, the uh, Microsoft Teams meetings going at the same, same time. Sometimes I'm thinking if you try to draw the, the little map of what was happening over those two days, my goodness, what a complexity, but uh, yeah. it's definitely possible. Um, so do you want to, I'm a little curious about, because I, I have sort of my way of doing it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm a little interested in, so, so the sort of setup around it, the practicalities. Mm. What, um, what does that look like? Yeah, so I can, uh, can you know all that? I have a, a mirror board sort of prepared um, that I can sort of share here and, and take people mm -hmm. through. Yeah. Um, so I hope you see my screen. Yes. Um, but I think before we sort of dive into this, I mean, when talking about the practicality is I think you sort of hit the nail on the head there around the complexity of, of obviously sort of running these type of planning sessions uh, in a hybrid fashion. Um, and an enormous part of it, probably the biggest part to, to success when it comes to hybrid planning is the preparation. Um, so what tools are you using? You know, how do you plan to coordinate everybody both in the physical space and in the online space? How do you get people to, to interact so sort of seamlessly with, with each other? Um, so the, the preparation is, is, of course, key um, to success uh, when it comes to hybrid planning. And I think that's often, oftentimes it's, it, I guess it's probably what puts people off. Um, it's definitely what put me off in the beginning. Um, you know, before I started this, it was it was definitely sort of, uh, yeah, it, it's either easier to do it all in person or all online. Um, but once you sort of start with uh, trialing things out, um, you realize that it's definitely possible to do it hybrid. And for me, I would say it's uh, it's been a bigger success to to run planning hybrid than than just strictly face to face or strictly online. Mm, okay. So that's that's something about. Uh, so this is a mirror board that you're showing here. Have you, yeah. have you thought about staying in? Uh, I think you guys are doing uh, asset DevOps, right? Yeah. So our sort of our two what's, main tools. What's the, yeah. Yeah. What's our the two main reasons between mirror and and uh, asset DevOps or a different tool. Sorry, I I didn't. No. So that. what's the what's the considerations that you had? Why did you end up on Miro rather than staying in Asset DevOps? Yeah. So they for me they're they're two two sort of entirely different tools. Um, Miro for me is is really all about the creativity and and the collaboration. So it, it's kind of bringing that sort of physical space to you online. Um, it, it's, you know, it, it gives sort of hands to, to everybody that, you know, don't have them in, in the online space. So, um, you have, 
it recreates that physical kind of feeling of, of putting down the post-it notes and sticking them up on the wall and, and writing, uh, you know, whatever it might be sort of, so it gives you that kind of recreation of that sort of physical collaboration, whether you're online or, or in the room. Um, and it's that it's that sort of one place that everybody can kind of come together as well. So we we typically have everybody, whether they're in the room or online, sort of logged into Miro on the same board um, and and ready to to plan together that way. And then Azure DevOps for us is is sort of where the next step in in the in the process. So it, it's where we take the plan, we put it into Azure DevOps, and that's where we actually work with um, our work items. Uh, so we have our epics features, uh, user stories there. Um, so Azure DevOps, I know a lot of people do bigger planning, PI planning in Azure DevOps. Um, for me, it's a bit, it's a bit restricted. You don't sort of get that physical kind of collaborative feeling like you can just touch and move things around. It's, it's quite sort of stiff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that is, for me is the big difference with Miro. It's uh, it, it's really sort of that recreation of, of the physical feeling of uh, yeah uh, how you plan and, and put yeah. the notes up. Yeah, and sometimes when I when I talk about this and when I think about you know not necessarily big room planning online or hybrid, but just online anything, uh, any collaborate any online collaboration. I'm, I'm sometimes thinking, how would I do it if we had each other face to face? Yeah. And, and then I'm I'm really thinking, how can I, how, how can I mimic, mimic? How can I recreate that sense in an online setting? And mm -hmm. after I discovered Miro, and disclaimer, I'm in love with Miro. <laughs> but after I discovered Miro, I haven't found a tool that has that feeling, that collaborative feeling, as as you mm -hmm. talk about. Anyway, but maybe now we've talked about Miro as a tool for a bit. Uh, could you give us a little tour on on the on the board that, that you're using at Stena for the for yeah. the absolutely. So our basic setup here is uh, we start off with with sort of the agenda. Um, so we make sure we have yeah our agenda here in stickies. And the reason we 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 like to do that as well with the sticky notes is because you you never know how long you're going to take on one particular thing. So you're always able to just move things around, which is brilliant. Um, and next to the agenda here, we have this uh, this big help SOS box. And that is primarily for us as um, facilitators. Um, so we see, yeah, if anybody needs help with something, whether it's something to do with the board, whether it's uh, help with um, breaking down work items, whatever it is, we can just either jump into the Teams chat or find them sort of in the physical space as well. Um, so we ask people to sort of put some sticky notes in here and, you know, just a big sort of help me and uh, we, we, will, we will find them. Um, and then we sort of get on to, to the board itself. So I've done a little bit of uh, prep here. I've tried to, um, sort of keep this as simple and explanatory, as self-explanatory as, as possible. Um, so as, as I mentioned before, we have uh, our long and thin, thin planning, which is where we sort of create our epics, um, our sort of larger chunks of work, typically for us one to three months, um, going into our, our big room planning. And we have those prioritized and sort of listed here on, on the left-hand side. Um, and then what we do in the big room planning, as I'm sure most people are familiar with, is uh, we have the Epic owner here, and then we sort of break down the work. So here, where you're seeing these different colored squares, these would be um, features or those sort of smaller deliverables that go into the Epics, um, sort of, yeah, planned out here. Um, uh, for each month of, of the quarter. Um, further down to the bottom of the board, we have um, sort of different uh, work items here. So we have a place for work items that are outside of the priority 
learning and development, um, unplanned work and maintenance. Um, but that's just more around our specific process when it comes to uh, comes to the big room planning. Um, <clears throat> the colors here, they relate to teams. So we make sure that we have a, a nice team color key. So everybody knows who is uh, putting down sort of what items on the board and, and can relate that back to back to the teams. Um, and then we have some some nice icons here that we like to use uh, on the board. And my favorite ones here are the sustainability features. So typically what we do is if we have a dependency, a dependency, for example, you would just say, okay, you know, we are this item here would have a dependency, and then we need we know that we need to discuss um, between this team needs to discuss between whoever's put the dependency down, and they will we will make sure that they find each other sort of during the day. <clears throat> and the sustainability features here it, it's uh, about yeah okay this this item here that's um, that is sort of working towards our sustainability goals. Um, in the company. So we have everything sort of nicely sort of visualized and, and clear for, for everyone who is both in the physical space and, and in the online space. Yeah. I'm curious about the, <clears throat> so just to the left of the epic title, you have a little <laughs> symbol there, the teams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is for our, um, our breakouts. So we are doing breakouts by Epic. Um, we started off doing it breakouts by team and asking them to sort of prepare the features together and, and call in other, other teams as well if, if they need to discuss dependencies, et cetera. Uh, we're now moving towards sort of doing a breakouts by Epic. So that will give all of these teams that you see here a good chance to jump into this team's call and start, sort of start discussing dependencies, what they need to deliver, when they need to deliver. Um, yeah, and also for the stakeholders as well, the business stakeholders. Okay. I have a little story about the, the teams, but I want to let you finish uh, the board first. Yeah. If you want the board, yeah. So, I can move a little bit over here. So we make sure that we have, um, as I said, the icons, the teams labeled out and yeah, some question icons here. So for anybody that have has a uh, question. So we try to make everything sort of as clear as possible, um, whether you're online, in person, in the room. So everybody is, is funneled into using Miro. So um, yeah, we're all kind of collaborating together in, in that way. Um, I can say up here we have um, our little campfire. So we have more than five teams. I think we're, we're sort of in our one of our bigger plannings, we're sort of 20, 25 teams, I think it is. Um, so we, we try to make sure that there is a, a space where um, all the team members are visualized. Um, and it's clear to everybody what each team is is doing and and who is owning the team who the team members are so it makes it much easier for everybody to find one another um so I, I really like this this space so this is kind of where the teams live here and we have a little sort of template around uh yeah the the product name the the members uh the mission and vision of each team and the the ceremonies that they're performing sort of the sprint reviews uh retrospectives etc um, so everybody can kind of see what everyone is, is doing and, and ask questions uh, to one another. Um, if they see, for example, that they're take, taking part in a, in a ceremony that your team isn't, then maybe it might make you curious as to how the teams are running that and what the value and, and benefits are for them. And then we have over here, we have sort of, yeah, we make sure that we have our instructions on the planning process and um we don't have too many i don't have too many instructions on on this board as it's just sort of a, a a demo but typically on our main board we make sure that we have kind of instructions for all of the the different sort of features of the board and the different areas so everybody knows kind of what they're doing um at all times yeah 
um, and if they have questions, hopefully we, they are answered sort of in, in the instruction areas rather than having to reach out sort of all the time. Nice. Is there more on the board you want to share? Yeah, um, I can share this fantastic tool here is, um, is Slido. Um, this has kind of been a, a big uh, tool for us, and I guess we would probably get into it a, a, in a bit. But uh, so Slido is a fantastic um, app website for, um, for questions, polls, quizzes, whatever. We, we use it for um, anonymous uh, questions. So um, typically when we have, when we do our bigger and planning, we are around 150 to 180 people um, that can sort of restrict uh, some people from asking questions sometimes and people get nervous they don't like to sort of stand out in in front of a lot of people so we've used slido as kind of a tool to um, enable uh, people to to ask questions anonymously um, that's really opened up the conversation in sort of the main plenum um, so that, that's been a, a really, a real big help for us in, in sort of that collaboration piece when it, when it comes to our planning. Um, and do you want me to get into the speed dating already? Yeah, already? yeah, let's talk about that because there's something about how do you, so, so I've, I've, uh, experienced online and face to face. Mm -hmm. But uh, that the whole idea of the big one planning, everyone here will know that. I'm thinking is for to get the the, the teams to cross pollinate, to talk to each other, mm -hmm. to sort out dependencies, to you know become friends almost. Uh, mm -hmm. And in in uh, in a face to face setting, I found it. I found that I've been uh, I've, I've been uh, pushing quite a bit, you know. All the teams, the whole, if you're doing a two day thing, uh, what I've seen is that during the whole first day, it's really hard for, for, for us as facilitators to get, to get the teams out of their shell, out of their bubble and start talking to other teams because they're not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, I hear that over and over again. Yeah, but we're not done yet. Mm. And, and, and uh, at some point I, uh, I, I just became the, the mean version of myself saying, I don't care whether you're done or not. <laughs> what? Now you go talk to that other team. So being sort of pushy about it until I realized that didn't work. I should have known. But it, um, so so what we've done in, instead um, in a in a face to face setting has been to you know do the this whole introduce the whole idea of team dating or or mm -hmm. team speed dating, um, and it it's been working quite. Quite sweet, I would say, in a face-to-face -face mm. setting. And then I try to to convert that into the into the online world. And I found it was so difficult because I don't know where people are. You know, when when you end up in a room, you can see where you know. Oh, now, now that team is going on to the other team. But when you're in in a hybrid setting, uh, they don't do that. I mean, they either they are all online or some are uh, sitting in their room. Mm. So therefore. Um, so and, and then you and I talked about how do we how do we get the team dating to work in an online setting? So yes, mm -hmm. please let's let's hear about that. I think this, this is one of the key things. Yeah, absolutely. So we um, sort of brainstormed around this, and and this is kind of what we what we came up with. And at it for again for us, it's just been this has really opened up the big room planning. This is. For me, it, it's what makes it. I think for the teams, this is what makes uh, makes the big room planning so incredibly valuable as well. Um, and so here we have sort of again a, a drastically scaled down version of, of the matrix that we use. I think we're like I said around sort of twenty five teams. So um, what we have here is uh, our speed dating. We call it a speed dating schedule. So. The, the premise is we um, we encourage the teams whenever they realize uh, sort of 
realize they need to talk to another team, whether it's about dependencies or whatever it may be, um, you know, collaboration on, on different epics, etc. We encourage them to um, schedule um, time um, uh, to talk to, to the teams that they are dependent on or, or working with. Uh, so we have this um, matrix here that we've, we've created. So um, as you can see here, we have um, Team Orange, for example, want to talk to, to Team Blue and, and Team Yellow would like to, to speak to Team Pink. Um, so this is sort of where in the matrix where you register kind of who you would like to talk to. And then we as facilitators um, at the end of our first day of, of the planning would sort of sit down and take um, the matrix and then sort of create this uh, time schedule here. Uh, so the second day of our planning um, will have the speed dating scheduled. And then we will have this nice uh, schedule here where the teams can see who are they going to talk to and when. Um, and this, yeah, as I said, it, it's very, it's difficult, right? When, when you're sort of um, in the breakouts always to bring in the, everybody else that you, you would like to talk to. So this is just a, a simple kind of easy and clear way to say, I'd like to grab you for a 15 minute chat, um, you know, at this time in this room. And again, we have our uh, Teams uh, conversations here. So all they have to do is kind of click on this uh, link and then click the arrow and they're sort of in a Teams room with one another and able to kind of discuss their dependencies and whatever it may be that they, they want to talk about. Okay. So the first day they can request is that how, how you do it? Yeah, so we do our, our okay. planning over a couple of days. So so we usually ask them the first day when you know that you would like to uh, grab somebody uh, tomorrow for the speed dating, please um, schedule it in the matrix and then we'll make the uh, the time schedule um, for the second day. Um, but it, it's pretty clear and quick and easy to, to work with if you're doing it over the course of one day, for example. Um, it, it's it's easy to see who wants to talk to who, and then you just need to to find the right times for them. Yeah. And um, do you find it easy or difficult to make the time schedule? After um, requests from the teams, how? Yeah. Hmm? It's. I, I would say it's. It's. We find it pretty straightforward pretty easy um it can you know we are, we're quite a few teams as i said and it can get a little bit uh messy but it, it's just um you know i think it's you know it's maybe sort of 30 minutes max it, it's really you know to do it across 25 teams it's not that bad and the the value that the teams get out of it, it it's absolutely worth sort of sitting down and taking a little bit of time just to make sure that you know, the teams have that time together and, and don't really have to think about it. They can just say, I want to talk to this person or this team, and then we sort of make it happen for them. And I think there's an enormous value in that. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it can be, you know, slightly tedious at times, but uh, it's, it's totally worth it for me. Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm keeping a, an eye on the chat here. Um... Elliot and Stefan Rasmussen is asking a question. Is the team link icon standard in Miro or something you have created yourself? And if, if so, how? Yeah, so um, how we do this, it, it's, uh, it's not a standard in Miro, I don't think. So we've, we've played around with this um, a little bit and uh, found that if you if you create a, a Teams meeting in um, Outlook and then copy the link into Miro, what you'll find is you'll just get the the straightforward um, text, the the link text, and and that's really not great uh, for us. So, um, but if you create the uh, the Teams meeting in Microsoft Teams itself and then you copy the uh, Teams meeting from the Teams calendar and you paste it into Miro, you will get this nice little uh, uh, Teams card here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that seems to be a sort of a, a mirror. I don't know if it's a mirror feature or, or a Teams feature for when you copy the link um, directly from the Teams calendar, not uh, Outlook, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. There are a couple more questions, but uh, now that we talk about the Teams, uh, Teams, Teams slash Miro setup. Yes. Um, one of the one of the things that that we that I found uh, over the last couple of days here, uh, during the first day of yeah the day before um, we started and during the first day, I found that people were a little confused um, mm. about where I don't have the meeting in my in my calendar. Mm. Uh, where how do I know when to go where, and mm. and it, it it took us a little while and I've. I remember that from the past, doing doing these hybrid um, big room plannings, that to to get people used to, the only thing you have in your calendar is the the two day in, invite for the big room planning, and yeah. what you do there. So in the morning, <laughs> or when you whenever when you start when you join the big room planning, you go into that uh, that common meeting, the plenum I usually call it. Mm. Then from there. There's a link to the mirror board, and then everything, all your how you navigate around in the different uh, in the different uh, breakouts is uh, is based on uh, the, those links on the mirror board. Only that. Um, one of the, one of the mistakes I made in the past was I had I had you know the links were on the mirror board and they were also in people's calendars, and 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 as a little facilitator committee. Trying to keep all that in sync is just impossible. So now mm. we just create the the Teams links uh, at a random time uh, in my own calendar, uh, and and then uh, then uh, I've been doing what what you just described. Just put the links in, onto the mirror board, and when people need to go and talk to someone about a specific epic, mm. for example, uh, they click on that link. Um, yeah. And I think you also have for the for the for the team breakouts. I think you do you have links for that too, or how do you do that? Where do we yeah, we links? we do. Ah, cool. Yeah, so so I don't I don't actually have it on this board, but um, in our uh, in our big room planning sort of board, we we tend to add sort of teams links uh, to the side here of each team. Ah, okay. um, so when we do the teams breakouts, they you know the team can go there, but anybody else that wants to sort of jump into those conversations as well, whether whether it's the sort of business stakeholders, etc., mm -hmm. can also just follow those conversations with with the teams. Okay. Um, so yeah, we try to make that sort of as clear as as possible. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes it also takes a bit of facilitation. So I think we are um, a team of of three um usually when when we're doing the facilitation so that tends to to kind of work quite well um so a good split between the sort of physical and online space cool. just to keep an eye on what's happening so so say that again you're three people facilitating the big room planning yeah we are three people um you know we could definitely do it with uh, a couple of us i think i think one for 180 people would be a little bit overwhelming but <laughs> Yeah, but um, typically we're we're three, and and it works. Uh, yeah, it works well for us. Um, but I think you know we we could also do it. I think we could manage quite well with two as well. Yeah. Okay. So what are the? How do you? When you're three people, do you sort of do you agree who who's playing which roles in the facilitator team, or how do you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, as I said before, I, I think it, you know the key, especially when you're doing hybrid planning, is is in the preparation. Um, so we, for us, I mean, we we put quite a bit of planning into it, and we have uh, yeah, sort of our our schedule, so we know who is sort of facilitating um, each agenda item um, generally, um, and then we we sort of have the. Um, you know, we know who's kind of going to be going around during the breakouts and just uh, yeah, helping the teams with with any anything that they need, whether it's you know getting into the right uh, teams uh, meeting or whether it's finding the right physical space. Um, yeah, so we have that kind of all planned and mapped out ahead of time. Okay, good stuff. 
uh, we have another question from Katja Peen. Hi, Katja. Uh, Katja is asking, do you break down the epics uh, to features during the big room planning or before? Yeah, so we, we break down the epics into features in the big room planning. So for us, that's the, that's our purpose of, of the big room planning. Um, so it's it's the sort of the space for the teams to come together, take a look at the prioritized epics for the quarter, and then decide or, or discuss what work actually needs to go into delivering those epics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, I hear a lot from people uh, we need to prepare for the big room planning. We need to we need to do a lot of refining before. We need to have our features and sometimes stories in place. We need to, and then then uh, uh, <laughs> so so and so sometimes I experience that we've done the planning. Mm. Everyone has done the planning before the big room planning, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and of course you know preparing and thinking things through is always a good thing. But there's yeah. a caveat to this. I've I've noticed mm -hmm. that there are two two pitfalls with doing too much for the teams to do too much ahead of time. Mm -hmm. One is that um, when they show up at the big planning, they are all they're all uh, they're all done uh, in terms of their mindset. Is we have team A, we've made our plan. Here's our plan, just sort of broadcasting it to others, like one-way communication. This is our plan, we've made it. These are the features uh, that we have in our sprints going forward. Mm. Next team, this is our plan, broadcast it, uh, mm. and so on. And with like, as you say, 20 teams, I think we had 25 teams uh, the last couple of days. Mm. Uh, listening to, <laughs> to 20 teams broadcasting their plans uh, is, is not exactly uh, so much fun. And, and, but but that, maybe that's not the biggest problem. Uh, the problem that I've seen is that the mindset is is closed now. We've made our planning. We're just showing it to the rest of you. And if it doesn't fit your planning, then hmm, so be it. Yeah. Of course, rationally, everyone knows that we get together in the big room planning to sort out those dependencies. But mm -hmm. it, I've seen a lot of arguments and you know mm -hmm. people in tears actually because there's been discussions about sort of priorities and, and who who something's got to give. But I'm not. I'm not the one. Uh, yeah. So, so the lock mindset is one issue I see if there's too much too much planning ahead of time. The other is that if we've done all the planning before the big room planning, what are we supposed to do? Mm. And and I don't know if you uh, if you have experienced like what I have. Uh, there's always pushback uh, from the organization in various places. Are you spending two full days with 150 people? Do you know how much money that costs? Is it really worth it? Uh, we have work to do. We're busy here, uh, mm. so we're not just like playing around with post-its because we have some some deliverables deliverables to to work on. Yeah, uh, and and of course you and I know that the benefit of a big room planning hybrid or not is it's an investment, and you get so much more out of the investment. I think you need to be. How was it like? If if you get more than two percent more uh, efficient, mm. uh, more productive, if you will, uh, then it's a good investment. And and I am I know deep in my bones that we do get get a lot more than than two percent uh, more productive doing the big room planning. However, yeah. it's it's sort of it's it's adding to the to the doubtful people argumentation that this is a waste of time is every if everyone has done the planning before the planning mm. so what i do you have some experiences or some 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 discussions about that yeah uh, of course i mean for us that's that's kind of also been the big challenge right i mean at, at stand line it, it's uh going on this this journey it's been sort of a you know, a big sort of change management piece as well. So it's it's changing our culture around the conversations that we have, how we interact with each other, you know, on a day to day. Um, and, you know, for me, it, the three sort of really important pillars here are the core kind of principles that we're trying to, to um, bring around are, you know, collaboration, communication and transparency. Mm -hmm. 
um, so when we when we plan together, when we're sort of creating that understanding together, you know, it's driving enormous value for us. And I think one one sort of uh, conversation that sticks out in my mind is is when we first started um, started out on this journey. And I think it was the the long and thin planning. So it's the more strategic, our more strategic planning. You know, we had a, a conversation between a, a stakeholder and uh, a business stakeholder and, and uh, a member of our digital teams, and it was kind of you know the perception from the digital perspective was that oh you know the business they 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 don't they won't listen to the priorities and we've wanted to be prioritizing you know this item for a long time um but i i it's not worth kind of bringing up because they just they won't want it they'll want to do something else and when we came together in in the long and thin planning for the first time we sort of ended up in this conversation and um oh the the business the particular business stakeholder was like that would be amazing if you if you deliver that i will i'll take you all out for a for a beer that would be fantastic you know so it it was this kind of perception that we we'd built up um in our own minds i guess that you know they just they they won't want to hear it uh, they won't, that won't be a priority but actually it's what they you know what the business wanted to prioritize the whole time um so just kind of bringing bringing the, the two areas of the organization together, sort of create, having that communication, having that sort of collaboration, creating that transparency. I mean, it's provided enormous value and sort of having that prioritization then going into the big room planning, going to the teams and saying this, you know, this is what we want to sort of work towards over the next quarter and how we get there, you know, that's up to you as, as, as you know, as the teams to decide on, but, you know, this is a priority that we're sort of 80 ish percent confident that we're going to, to deliver. Maybe there'll be, you know, some legal requirements or whatever that pop up um, over the quarter and we need to reprioritize. But, uh, you know, I think I'm probably preaching to the choir when it comes to, to, to the process of having uh, priorities uh, for a quarter or a bit longer and, and sort of actually delivering on them. But, um, yeah, this, you know, the, as I said, that communication, that transparency, it's, you know, that's what this is all about for me. And whether you're, you know, kind of working in an agile organization, whether you're following safe or, or whatever, it, it, it always comes down to those kind of core principles. You know, what is it that you actually want to achieve by, by working in this way? And for us, it, it's definitely that sort of improving the communication, improving our collaboration and yeah, Make it, bringing around more clarity around our priorities. Good. There's a question more here from Ed Stoy. Uh, he's asked, do you use the Miro as your DevOps integration to pre-work some of the FX slash features to pull into Miro as template features to automatically work on and then sync back to Azure DevOps? Or is mm -hmm. that most action to get it migrated? Uh, how are yeah. you? Planning? So today we are doing it manually um so we're we yeah we're just kind of doing the collaboration in Miro, and then we're sort of manually you know creating the epics and, and adding the features etc into into azure devops but uh that we plan to experiment with so um i i know that there is a, a nice um miro uh, integration with azure devops and you can sort of uh highlight over your stickies or, or whatever and kind of turn it into a, a feature um, or user story or task, and it will sort of appear in your backlog. Uh, that we haven't sort of started experimenting with yet. Um, we we're still kind of on the journey of yeah, sort of working with with the planning. Um, so that is kind of part of our next sort of maturity phase for sure. Okay. Um, we've been playing with it at uh, the Gothenburg company that I'm uh, working with. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty pretty neat, um, uh, and and there is a there is a link sort of from Miro and to to Azure and and the other way around, and another another um, benefit I've noticed is that when when you do it the right way and and we can certainly get you those instructions we don't it's too technical to to do that right here, uh, then. Uh, when you zoom in, the, the, so when you zoom out, you want to get the overview. You, you, the the name of the feature say is fairly uh, in, in large writing, and you don't get all the letters. And then when you zoom in, you get more and more detail. And then when you zoom out, so that that's a pretty neat uh, mirror 
uh, as DevOps um, uh, feature, I would say. So, yes. All right. Um, so I think you already talked about, or have you, uh, what's the benefits? So if you just name sort of two top, I don't know, two or three benefits of doing hybrid big room planning, what would that be, Elliot? Yeah. So the main benefit for me is that, generally speaking, no one is, is left out. So it, it doesn't matter if, if somebody, you know, can't attend physically or, you know, needs to do something else. It, generally speaking, they have they have both options. So you can be online in person. So we have very, very good participation, uh, I would say. Um, uh, the other benefits are kind of, yeah, I think it's just, it's, it, we don't have to fly everybody in, you know, but it, it's, um, but we still have that kind of, we can have that sort of face-to-face -face feeling, right? So if you do it, if you do it purely online and I've done planning purely online as well, you kind of, you miss that sort of, uh, you miss a bit of that connection. So I think it's, you know, it's just giving people that sort of flexibility. That, that for me is, is the main thing. You, people want to be sort of face-to-face -face generally. It, it's too much to ask to, for everybody to come face-to-face -face and just kind of cut people off if, if they can't make it. Um, it's not sustainable to fly, you know, people in from all over all over the world, all, all, all over Europe uh, every, every quarter. So, um, but we still don't want to take away that opportunity when we have, you know, more than half of, of the sort of the planning room, you know, have the opportunity to be there face to face. We don't want to kind of remove, you know, that opportunity either. So I think that's, that's really the main thing for me is just, is just giving people that opportunity to be face to face, but also to be, uh, you know, still participate and be a part of the planning and be a part of the conversation if they can't be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then all the other benefits are really just around the process and around the planning in general, but the hybrid element is, yeah, giving people that flexibility, absolutely. Mm. Um, I remember, I think I did the, my first big room planning, I don't know, six, eight years ago, something. I remember Danske Bank in, uh, in uh, Aarhus, <clears throat> and, and we flew people in, mm. and it was expensive. And, you know, everybody had a, oh, it's so cool to be together. And then yeah. when we started talking about, so when are we doing it next time? Uh, this The sort of CFO kind of person came to me and said, <clears throat> order. <laughs> I I crunched the numbers. This has cost us, I can't remember, 3 million Danish or something. Mm. Mm, yeah, I, I knew that, but oh, I wasn't sort of aware of it, but it wasn't new to me. Um, and so he started challenging the, you know, just the stuff that you're talking about you, uh, now, in, in those days, especially from, from a cost perspective. And I remember I was, so the, my, the challenge they gave me was to figure it out next time you can't fly people in, how do you want to do it? Mm. And I froze, my brain was just like, no, <laughs> yeah, there's no way to do that. And then, uh, you know, I started paying the sum and then COVID hit and uh, some other people from Danske Bank called me, I think it was a Thursday. And they uh, said, um, yeah, so we have these, this uh, big room planning next week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're thinking it, it might be okay, but uh, would you want to come help us a little bit? Uh, and, and do you have time? And, and I didn't, but that sounded like a challenge I couldn't say no to. So I was like, yeah. Um, we'll figure something out. And then I didn't sleep for five days in a row. And, and I was digging down into, we had, there was a, a little while after COVID hit. So, so I was playing with me or another, another tools, but mm -hmm. still I was, it was so challenging. Yeah. And, uh, and this particular program, uh, in Danske Bank, they told me afterwards that they thought it worked better than face to face mm. and they they also said i we i think uh, this was a sort of program manager on the business side um 
she said, I think that we saved three months. Mm. Doing, doing this planning and getting, this was a new you know, uh, program with teams from all over uh, and getting people together and, and the, the online element was the enabler of doing that because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get people together. Uh, so she said, I think we can launch three months earlier and, and, and this particular woman has, you know, been program managing for, I don't know, 20, 30 years or something. So she has a lot of experience, a lot of, lot to compare with. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> and, and now I'm thinking, I don't want to go back. And I think one of, one of the reasons is the flexibility you have in Miro. I remember I was in Stockholm somewhere. We did the program board on the wall. And mm. that was after I started to doing the, the epics down. I think the traditional way, what what uh, Safe is suggesting is to have have the um, the teams down and the sprints out, right? Mm. And and what I see that, that that you know there's a risk that does a lot of siloing. What I talked about before, each team know mm. what they're doing, but they don't know how it how it uh, how it uh, connects with the other teams' work and the dependencies. Um, mm. So, and I remember having Epix uh, down, and 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 uh, you know it, we were we had ladders <laughs> to, to climb up, and and so and then suddenly I realized, man, it doesn't fit. And mm -hmm. and then during the big room planning, something else came up. Some of the yeah. some of the uh, roles that you had on on your little uh, um, template there, Elliot. Yeah. Uh, so th then we ended up having it sort of on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you get the ladder? So, so, so the the flexibility and the infinite space in Miro uh, yeah. has convinced me now. I think I, I don't want to go. Um, the, no. the, I think the super extra double perfect setup, and I would be like a ginormous screen mm. uh, where you have all that, uh, and then. If people were in the same town or the same part of the world, then get people together face to face. Face, but yeah. the program board online in Miro, nothing beats that. No, I totally agree. And yeah, I, I know a previous company I worked at. You know, I've been in a room with three hundred people. You know, in a big room planning with post its and string and uh, you know flip charts and I don't even want to begin to imagine the amount of work that goes in after that to sort of make all of it digital so mm, no. it's uh, also that you know it saves an enormous amount of time having it in Miro it, it really it replicates kind of the physical experience very well no. um, and it saves an enormous amount of time in, in no. documenting what's been done afterwards no. absolutely in a different company uh, even further back before we even talk about big room planning I, I did something you know i guess it was big room planning uh and that was we'd spend a whole week uh it was um, a producer of, of cancer scanning devices and they were you know planning their next version uh which they do like every three four years or something mm -hmm. so we had a wall what three meters uh times 15 i think and mm -hmm. that was all brown paper and we had it it was so good and on the first day we could just feel now mm, we're getting there so the friday would be just get together you know celebrate have, mm -hmm. have a campaign whatever and then uh and then just uh, you know go through the plan and then that would be it yeah. and when we get in there friday morning the whole thing is on the floor yeah <laughs> And that doesn't happen anymore. Anyway, uh, before we end, um, Elliot, I want to I want to show a little example uh, mm -hmm. of what what some of our board looked like. Uh, yeah, when I left Gothenburg. We have a couple of questions as well, Ola. Should we? Uh, okay, yeah. Should um, we do the board and then go through some questions? Or? Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's do the. Um, let's do the. Uh, no, let's do the questions first, and then we can. Uh, yeah. I'm aware of the time too. We have five minutes left. So Robert asked, Mural versus Miro for this. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a very good question. I, I don't have um, any experience with uh, with Mural actually um, compared to Miro, but I would say that, you know, to me it sounds like a personal preference sort of thing. I think if 
it's not the specific tool in, in Miro that we're trying to promote here. It's just the idea of taking that sort of uh, physical feeling of putting up notes and that physical collaboration into the digital space. So whatever works, works best for you. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't give you um, sort of mm -hmm. any advice which one is which one is better. But for us, we, we use Miro and, and it's a fantastic tool. It works very well. And as Jenny points out in the chat, I have a little experience with Miro. Mm. Uh, and I, I ended up in Miro, uh, and as Danny writes, uh, Miro has limited space, where Miro, the, the space is like infinite almost. Okay. Um, yes. So let's, uh, there's one last point I want to make. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you share the, uh, the board again, please, there we go. Yeah. So I'll click on the wrong thing there. Oops. Is it here you want to be over? Yes. So, so one little extra tip. Uh, when in the beginning of the uh, the big room planning, uh, we just did uh, the last couple of days. You see, there's the the name, the epic title in in big writing. So when you zoom out, you can still see it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a picture, or there's a the. PowerPoint version of the epic with a little more description, and over to the left, there's uh, there's a picture of a prior version of the uh, the epic, and this is uh, I, I find that people connect with the pictures because they've been someone put that green uh, check mark on there, and that person's like that was me. So there's yeah. something connecting the reality to the online hybrid uh, yeah. thing, and and uh, the other only point I want to make is that. In the beginning of the big room planning, what we did was to go through each of the epics just briefly and agree on which teams has stakes in each of these epics. Uh, so industrial, corporate operations, and PCME for epic number two here. And then it was super easy for us as facilitators to uh, zoom out and uh, look to the right and see if, if uh, those teams had actually planned some features uh, mm -hmm. So at some point there was no nothing green on there, so we could ask the green team, "Hey guys, have you have you decided that you don't have anything? Have you done that in your team dating, or have haven't you gotten to it yet, uh, or or what?" So so that was just uh, just I just wanted to share that. That, that yeah. has worked really well for me. So any final final words from you, Elliot? Oh yeah, there's something about yeah. the template, right? The mural verse. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we will um, we will upload and share a a template version of what we have here. Um, so if you if you would like to kind of work in this way and and copy the board and and sort of make it your own, then we will add a, a template there, uh, upload it to the mirror verse. So uh, that uh, Ole, I guess we will make sure that is is shared with everybody um, after this uh, webinar. Yes, we will. Um... I think one final part of the board to share here for me is the most important bit is the keep and try. So this we we definitely try to make sure that we have some some time um, every big room planning for people to to add some items here and then get everybody to kind of go through what they would like to to keep um, with regards to the planning and what we they would like to to do differently and and obviously. You know, this is never a perfect process. The the board is is never perfect. Um, so it, it's always good to see what we can what we can do differently, what we can improve, and what's working, and and what we can do better. So yeah. So uh, to wrap this up, um, I uh, I want to say if you haven't tried this yet, shy it away because it's online and it's hybrid and it's uh, maybe yeah. difficult. Um, <clears throat> it's doable. It works. Uh, and uh, uh, in a in a short while, uh, you will have access to that uh, template in the in the mirrorverse. And my dog is saying goodbye too. And um, try it out. And uh, if you want a little help, a little advice, a little support, a little encouragement, you're certainly welcome to reach out to Elliot or myself. We are all over the all over the place in the hybrid world, LinkedIn, whatever. 
Yeah. So thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot to you, Elliot, for taking the time to uh, to to uh, to do this together. With yeah, me. thank you very much, Ole. And uh, have a good day, everyone. Yeah, have a great day. Thank you so much, everybody, for for joining and listening. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.